welcome back viewers and I hope you thoroughly enjoyed part one of Laurie Minson down on the farm and you ain't seen nothing yet. Here comes part two. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube Punctured Media channel. Press the big red button. Sit back, relax and enjoy Laurie Minson down on the farm part two. Now, well, this is just so relevant and I didn't pre-prep you on this. Uh, we share a great love of the band, the band, uh, Robbie yeah. Robertson, Levon Helm, Garth Hudson. Yeah. Uh, Terry MacArthur, my colleague, and, and who helps uh, puts this together with Adam, uh, said, I would like you to ask Laurie's for a response to this quote by Robbie Robertson and everything you've just said. The road was our school. It gave us a sense of survival. It taught us everything we know, and out of respect, we don't want to drive it into the ground. Or it could be superstition, because the road has taken a lot of the great ones. It's a goddamn impossible way of life. <laughs> and, and both of us having survived, you're one of the few people left standing who's spent more time driving around finding people sure. to play to than I am. Slim was another level altogether. Sure. But I think that, that your articulation then is is just so succinct and, and, and so real that it is. You, you, As I say, that young artists, survival is a large part of the art. It's very easy to become the next... Well, it seems the age bracket's crept up. It used to be the 27 Club. Everybody seems to be killing over at 54 now. So we both dodged that one. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, uh, I, you know, life, life kind of presents lessons. There's a sort of a, there's free will and then there's some kind of, course or destiny um a, a person explained it to me one time and i'm sort of glad we kind of got talking about this I was wondering whether i was going to get to mention it but years and years ago and i kind of remember who it was i think it was some psychic woman or whatever but she she said to me she used this term um it's the um probability it, it's the uh, the spectrum of probability and so you can Take a point, say the tip of my nose. That's that's going straight line, straight up. Now, if you if you've got your act together, you can bypass all the crap in life and just go straight to the top and, and evolve in, into a, a better human being. Or you can be someone like me, who just goes crawl, 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 crawl. I'll slip back down, crawl, crawl, crawl. You eventually get to the same point, but it just takes a lot longer. Um, and oh, that's that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so if, for me, that's that's been my life. It's just like mistake after mistake uh, and, and get another chance, get another crack. Uh, and, you know, eventually my my health was so bad, you know, from just lifestyle choices that I <clears throat> I would have um, just ended up in, a, in the grave. Um, and then Shelley came along and, and that kind of um, turned my life around and it, it, it just made everything, uh, gave me a, just a whole new outlook. So, um, you know, stop smoking pot. Um, I hardly drink. I might have a beer here and there, but I'm just sort of coffee's about, you know, the extent of it. But it's it's just added years to my lifespan. And it's gotten back to what you were saying. It was like, well, I still play music and that's what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And I yeah. still like to party and have fun. I figured out how to enjoy myself without being completely ripped uh and you know life is good but you know I'm, I'm grateful to have been given that second chance to be able to really um turn all that around because some people will never get there they die before they realize actually you know like you're saying with those guys in the band so many of them are dead um from you know heroin overdoses and different things and it's just so sad that uh the lifestyle and the road take some of these good people down and um sometimes all it needs is a uh, someone to reach out and go hey you know you, you need a little bit of looking after and you know and, and it turns it around all summed up by uh aaron neville uh, robin neville who uh, is an amazing guitar player and singer and have those two big hits want to be just like you and sailor v and i just completely incidentally, all the stuff you've been talking about he and i became friends through circumstance and it had been all gold coast indie clicked and have been friends ever since but he was working with Aaron Neville from the Neville Brothers yeah and the quote that came from that and uh, Aaron said a very colorful life it's what I was and where I've been that makes me who I am 
And without all those things, you, you can't wind up in the same place and uh, in the right place rather. And you and I have both been blessed with the appearance in our lives and my, my case, the reappearance of somebody who gives you that focus. Now, yeah. I think one of the great joys for me, and this is sort of getting to the end of a, a conversation that could go for two weeks. <laughs> um, one of my favorite pieces of playing of, of uh, 128 recorded track is all your work on the song down on the farm sure ironically yeah. the, the podcast became down on the farm because it encompassed so much and, and this conversation is such a great illustration because it's not any one thing it's the philosophy of life it's yeah. how you deal with your challenges how you cope with your successes exactly. where music or whichever your pursuit and passion is yeah. sits in your life uh the song down on the farm in, in Compass is a Woman, the opening line is Rebecca told me with my heart in her hand and was my, I was deeply in love at 15 with a woman called Rebecca Williams. Right. 37 years later, all the permutations that you and I have both seen, she's my fiance. Yeah. We reckon that's only because uh, nobody else on the planet wants to live with us. But <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, without that, there's no real value in, in, in reaching your, your place of happiness. Um, I think, and I've said this several times in public, that you're performances on that album the number of people around the world who've commented on them uh, when we were born in the states uh, the number of people who noticed uh, all you're playing yours and charlie coles and ian lee's you know upholds a belief i've had forever that australian musicians now approach to music is probably the cleanest and, and the best in the world but uh, it, it, i think you don't really get to the stage of wondering what you leave behind until you've been through enough crisis to realise you're pretty lucky to be there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. With and you pointed out just before we went to air, directly over your right shoulder is the guitar that played all the slide parts on that song down on the farm and the harmonica yeah. parts that go with it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's something that we both have that you look back at and go, look, if we keel over tomorrow, someone down the track, some really cool 18-year-old who's messing around with slide is going to pick that up and say, I want to play like that, you know, or that that's a, a hugely influential thing. I find it very much with Brian, my oldest son, who you know well. Yeah. I wasn't watching when we were on the road that he was growing up with the finest musicians in Australia. Sure. And nowadays he'll play stuff that makes me turn around and go, where the hell did you learn that? But then you realise he was at it from the bassinet. So exactly. that's yeah. the last question I yeah. have for you. Yeah. And, and you know, I just want to close that thing by, by a huge acknowledgement to Shelley, your beautiful wife who... Your life since meeting her, it has just been, it's just been great. You've been happy every time I've seen you. Yeah. She's the most stunning girl in the world. And I believe you're producing, she's taking the, the leap from rockability to country and there's a, an album on the way. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're kind of, a, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's coming together. I'm sort of getting the songs, getting the really good quality songs. Uh, it's, you just don't want to put out anything that's sort of not, um, um, really, nowadays it's just more important than ever to have great songs and great productions. So yeah, it'll be good when it's when it all comes together. Um, I just wanted to say, James, here this is for you. I just had this uh, little harp line around here since we're talking about down on the farm. Uh, when we uh, when we put that, it's, I'm slightly going left here, but when we put all that music together. Uh, Kind of what you were just saying before is like the those influences and with with Briar, you know, you grow up with different stuff. One of the one of my favorite bands um, when I was growing up was a band called the Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and, and you don't really hear their music that much anymore. Um, but Steve Cash was the harmonica player in that band, and his specialty was those rhythmic riffs, you know. And so um, when we did that, I think um, I had that um, kind of going around in my head and. Kind of, Put that. That kind of thing, you know, and, and if you can get a hook on a little thing like that, and there's the song, you know, and the rest of it kind of just um, falls into place. Um, but yeah, that that record uh, when we first started playing together, uh, your uh, I think Age of Grace. Um, mm. that's the, that was the record we were touring and your songs like Time in His Hands. And then after being out on the road, went in and, and uh, recorded this road. And, uh, of course, that, that kind of broke 
everything, you know, and um, uh, I'm, um, I'll always really be grateful to you for, um, for that um, opportunity as well because um, at the time I'd just been kind of hanging around in Tamworth and looking for a bit of a break um, and then uh, the chance to come and, and play in your show came along and it, it really uh, took me. Uh, so you're all the time, but you, growing up in the country, you're kind of like, oh, you know, you're looking at people getting opportunities and you think, gee, you know, that'd be good. I'd love to be able to do that. Um, if I lived in America, you know, all, all those sorts of things. But here I am in a country town. And, and so when an opportunity comes along uh, and you get some success, um, to me, it's something uh, I'll, I'll always be really grateful for. And uh, that that call, I, I, one more thing. I, I still remember when we first, our first rehearsal, you had this idea that for me, I was some kind of, I think you, you said, oh, I thought you were going to be like Lindsay Butler, some kind of straight country dude, you know. And I, I, and I thought, oh, this guy is just won a talent quest and he knows nothing, you know. <laughs> and so that's how we started. And funnily enough, uh, you know, 30 years down the track, here we are. Jason, I'm going to leave our viewers with a few images that um, one is you at uh, – Kingsmith in uh, northwestern Tasmania with a, a room full of people. It was hot, hanging from your knees from the rafters of that place. You were fully yep. clothed at that one. The other <laughs> one was being not fully clothed at a church in Bendigo. But my favourite, I think, is, isn't actually music. We'd uh, played at the Myers Rug Department in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> and stayed at the Windsor Hotel, which is about the smartest thing any of ever, ever seen. And as we were leaving to get to the airport, Laurie was MIA and they couldn't figure out where he was. He was haggling for about 45 minutes with the receptionist about purchasing one of the Windsor robes, the dressing uh, robes for his, his then wife, Tracy. And that all went well and he got in the car and we sort of scuttled the airport. But because it, we'd been wondering what the hell was going on, uh, after he... <laughs> <laughs> About a week after he'd got home from that run, one of us said to Laurie at rehearsal, how'd the, uh, how'd the dressing robe go? And he said, uh, it was an inch too short. I had to give it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I guess the point of that illustration is, yes, life of working together on the road is all about the music, but you become part of each other's lives. And it's been a privilege and a pleasure to be part of yours. And you know, I, I think you've always known how much you've influenced where my music went. All that stuff you were just talking about then takes me back to being just delighted with how things grew. And we had such a great group of people with us that, that we're all, at the end of the day, it all comes back to the music. We're there for that that right That's reason. I can't think of a better place to end, mate. It's been a privilege <laughs> and a pleasure to have 30 years of doing this. But uh, just thank you. For you're always so busy. I really appreciate your time. Please give my love to your beautiful wife. I will and uh, you, was, you have just had a... Glimpse into the mind of a man I regard as a genius, mate. It's just a privilege. <laughs> Love it. And, and you're you're great. Great. Thanks. Appreciate good it, mate. Everybody. That's yeah. Laurie Minson. There's only one of him, thank God. <laughs> 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 and so that's it for this episode of Down on the Farm. I think it would be pretty easy to tell that that's one of my favourite people on the planet. Monster musician. Great guy. Laurie Minson. Thanks for coming, mate. Thank you to our major sponsors, Aussie Legends Hemp. Stylish Outback Clothing and the Granite Belt Brewery. Don't forget to subscribe to Punctured Media's YouTube channel down on the farm. Click the big red button and I will see you for the next episode. And I got my education down on the farm.